Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, welcome back. And we are with our favorite motivational dude, the brain whisperer, <laughs> none other than Steve Campbell. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Steve, uh, you know, we've we've been in a pandemic situation for over a year. Oh, gosh. Uh, there's the a world. new strain. I don't know what it's called. And it's... Uh, you know, people are worried about it all coming back again, which mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately with a virus is mm -hmm. kind of the way it works, I think, sometimes. The Delta, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so it's not too late to really address for people no. how to deal with this pandemic. I mean, fact, we're talking about not, mental health here. I don't think there's a better place than now because it's coming back. People have already been experiencing this for a year, and, and people are tired. Um, they're sheltered in place. We're working remotely. We're facing daily hazards from essential workers. We don't have people in our restaurants to serve us. Uh, people are having trouble finding workers to work for them. So all these things are just getting us anxious, tired, and depressed. There's Depression has really risen. So what can we do with this? What can we do with this? Well, I've shared with you before that everything starts up here. It starts with our mind. It starts with how we think, which is wonderful because the scientific world agrees that the human brain is the most complex organism in the universe. And its ability to do amazing things is just beginning to be learned. And that's sort of what I special was my specialty is understanding new things that the brain has learned. And that's why but they I want call to talk you about, the brain whisperer. That's why they call me the brain whisperer. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of my, my favorite. John. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to talk about today is four new ways of flourishing during this time. Five is too many to to learn and to remember. So let's just sort of deal with four. They're really simple to understand. You can write them down if you want to, because I'm primarily a teacher, so I like to keep things simple. So here are four ways of addressing what you might call the pandemic fatigue that the world is dealing with right now. And the first one, and you can write this down, they're really, really short, is number one, you can move. All of us can move. Research has shown that being still can be really detrimental to us physically. Sitting around is just plain not good for us. Uh, studies have shown that exercising, moving, uh, they keep our circulation in our brain going and they increase it. And so I make a point of taking a walk, maybe jogging, taking a bike ride. It doesn't have to be super athletic, but it can be something that's getting your blood circulation moving. I just can't emphasize that enough. You need to be moving. It's so easy to be able to, to sit back and do nothing that's the last thing your brain needs. Your brain needs gobs of circulation. It's really interesting. Your brain takes up about 2% of your body weight. That 2% uses up 20% of your energy. 20% of your energy is taken up by your brain. It also uses up 20% of your air, 25% of your blood, 30% of your water, 40% of nutrients all go to your brain. It's absolutely amazing. And that brain needs a lot of circulation. That's why when you cut yourself up here, you just bleed profusely. That's because so much of your blood is up here. And blood is where the oxygen is. So number one, just get moving. Take a walk. Take a run. Ride a bicycle. Just get moving. Number two, take a mindful pause. Say that again. Number two, take a mindful pause. Take some deep breaths. And mainly ask yourself 
what you're feeling. Now, why do I keep going back to our feelings? Because I've shared this with your people before. We're not thinking people who feel. We're feeling people who think. And the wonderful thing about our feelings is that our feelings primarily, not completely, but primarily come from what we're thinking. They're coming from our beliefs. So if you want to know what you're feeling, pay attention to what you're believing. Now, people sometimes have trouble with that. There's a wonderful handle on that if you want to know what you're believing. Listen to yourself talk. Listen to what you are saying to yourself about yourself. Because that is a direct reflection of what you're believing. So when you're saying things like, I just cannot do this anymore. Do you know what your brain says to that? Because your brain believes everything you tell it. Your brain says, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. You absolutely can't. This is it. You just can't do it. Your brain is convinced because you say it and your brain believes it. But here's the scary part. You keep locking on to those negative messages and your brain begins to rewire itself. This is called neuroplasticity. And those negative messages don't just sort of sit there. They become a part of the way you think. But here's the wonderful part about this. The opposite is just as true. When you give yourself positive messages, your brain rewires itself with those messages also. And they become a part of the way you think. So pay attention to what you are saying to yourself about yourself, about relationships, about the pandemic, about being isolated. Pay attention to those things because your brain's not only listening, it's making those things a part of the way you think. That becomes your mindset. And that becomes a part of who you are. So let's go back to number two. Take some mindful pauses. Be good to yourself. If there was ever a time that you needed to be good to yourself, it's right now. Number three, add structure to your days. Add structure to your days. It's really easy to sort of get up and, well, I wonder what I'm going to have today. You know what? Your brain doesn't like that too much. So what I do is I get up in the morning, I go to my computer or I go to my iPhone, and I say, what am I going to accomplish today? It doesn't have to be completely changing the world. It's what do I want to do today that will accomplish some things and also make me feel better about myself? If you don't have a goal, the brain won't know what to look for. I cannot tell you how important goals are. There's a wonderful book that was written back many, many years ago by Dr. Oh, gosh, what's his name? Um, by, um, I just forgot it. It'll come back. It was, um, well, I'm having... I'm having, okay, that's, I can't, it was, I can't remember what the book was. Well, you know but, what, Steve? What? You know what, Steve? Well, when you remember the name, we'll post it in the notes at the okay. bottom of the video. Thank you. But Thank you, you remember, you remember the message. <laughs> I know the message. The that's message right. was this. It was written, maybe you probably know who he was. He was a Austrian psychologist who was at Auschwitz for many years. And oh, he wrote, I, yes. Yeah, I, you know, I don't remember. I don't remember the name, but I know you've mentioned him before. Yeah, I mentioned yeah. him. Yeah. And he wrote, um, I can't remember that, that. But basically, what he discovered is that during those years when he was at Auschwitz as an inmate, the inmates that locked on to goals were the inmates that survived the camps. He saw the importance of goals. He saw that. And that's basically what he discovered. So goals, th are, goals are good for the brain then. 
goals are are so necessary for the brain right now. If if the brain if you don't have goals, you you really begin to die. There's a really interesting study during the world during the Korean War. Many of our soldiers ended up prisoners of war. And what the Korean captors would say to them is, this is it. You'll never be rescued. This is it for the rest of your life. And some of the soldiers that believed this would literally crawl into the corner of the cell, put a blanket over themselves, and die right there without anyone ever touching them because they had given up. So I can't tell you how important goals are, okay? Number four, have some fun. You need to laugh. A good belly laugh releases billions of white blood cells to help you defeat what's going on here. You really need to have fun. Make yourself a cake. Cook something new. Go to a place where you've never been before. Go to YouTube and go on all the rides at Disneyland. You can see every single ride. They're all there. Not only in Anaheim and Florida, but Shanghai, Paris. All the rides are there. You can spend the whole day taking rides at Disneyland without ever leaving your office. Have some fun. Be good to yourself. And you can go to YouTube and you can pretty much look at anything you want. There isn't a thing on YouTube that doesn't that, that I have found that doesn't show you how to do something, whether you want a fried chicken or make a cake or whatever. Have some fun. Be good to yourself. It really comes down to what you are saying to yourself about yourself. I remember... I was on my way to work and I was waiting for the light to change to get onto the freeway and a kid came up to me in a very, very fancy car, looked at my little Toyota and I could tell what was going to go on. I knew what was going to happen and sure enough, as soon as the light changed, he went peeling out in front of me, roaring up the freeway, passing everyone. And as I watched this, I had this epiphany. How many cars are already in front of him? Millions. How many cars are behind him? Millions. So maybe it's not a matter of how fast you get there. Maybe it's a matter of even in the pandemic, you're still going in the right direction. But even when you go in that direction, sometimes, especially now, we just run out of gas. We get tired. We get anxious. But you know when, when that happens, you can refill the tank. When you get a flat tire, you can replace the tire. When you lose a, your way, you can get a map. And what's so wonderful about the brain is the whole time the brain just saying, oh, okay. Is what you're saying true? I don't even care. All I care about is what you tell me. You say it, I believe it. You lock on to it, you know what I will do. I will do everything I can to make it true in your life. I think one of the most wonderful discoveries that psychologists made in the last 60 years is the fact that your brain listens to you without question, no arguments. In other words, you're the boss. Wow. Well, I'd say wow is really right here. Kind of interesting. Um, uh, I have to admit that I haven't found, other than missing family and friends, and that's in, increasingly opening up uh, with uh, mass vaccinations and things like that. I've mm -hmm. actually um, uh, had a, a, a pretty normal uh, time. Uh, I used to go to the gym five days a week. You talk about movement. And I replaced it with online classes for Tai Chi, which I used to only really practice maybe once or twice a week. Yeah. So I had yeah. like seven or eight classes a week spread out over five yeah. days. So, and it was structured. John yeah. and I got together uh, several times a week, but certainly we taped, what, about 300 episodes 
during right. that period of time. And wow. you talk about having fun and, and interesting yeah. activities. So uh, yeah. I, 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 can, I can endorse what you said because all those yeah. things I've been doing, not knowing you know, the language, but I think if people pay attention to what you just talked about, uh, uh, like uh, what was it, Cher in uh, what movie? She slapped the guy across the face and get over it. Oh, yes, Moonlight. Yeah, Moon, Moonlight. Moonstruck. Snap, Moonstruck. Yeah, snap, snap out, out of, of it. it. Snap out of it. <laughs> so thank you for uh, giving us a good uh, kick in the butt or uh, smack in the face. Snap out of it. So, John, how, John, have we helped you at all today? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated by uh, your explanation of how the brain works mm -hmm. and how we really need to be in charge of our brain. You need to take right. charge. We are. And yeah. tell your brain what you want to do, how you mm -hmm. want to be, mm -hmm. and how you want it to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, because but, your brain is kind of running your body. It's the nerve center. and Oh, yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot but, of things happen. But you're in charge. Let me share with you another story that I've shared before, but it's just so perfect. I was convinced for the first, for half my life that I was really stupid. I was just convinced of that. I won't go into the reasons, but I was convinced. But in the 1970s, I began discovering computers and I began tinkering around. Eventually, I went back to school and got a graduate degree in computer science. And I began teaching computer courses at this one college where I taught the dean came in the office. He said, one of our math professors just quit, so you're our new math professor. And I just freaked out. I said, no, 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 no. I can't do numbers. I've never been good at numbers. Numbers freak me out. I'm just so stupid in numbers. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And the brain said, and the dean said, well, if you want a job, you better learn because you're teaching math next semester. So I ran down to the library and I picked up all the books I could on how the brain works. That's how this whole thing started back in the 70s. And I began teaching my course based on how the brain lurks because I sort of already knew that. And my students began saying, oh, my gosh, you're such a wonderful math teacher. And they kept saying that. And eventually I decided it was a decision, a choice. I decided to listen to those students rather than what I've been saying to myself for 42 years. And when I did, my brain said, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. And I love teaching math and eventually ended up writing two college textbooks on what do you think? Math. Okay. Here's the point. When I chose to replace, not change, because the brain hates change, so I never use the word change, replace the old messages of being stupid with new messages as being really smart, my brain said, yeah, you're really right, you're really right, you're really right. The brain rewired itself, and I got really smart. <laughs> and I ended up writing four books. Who would have known? Who would have known? Who would have so, known? So when it comes to the pandemic, we're depressed, we're lonely, whatever negative issues we're having because we're isolated and maybe ill, we can, we can talk ourselves out of it, essentially. It's, is it easy? Of course not. But I'm not saying it's magical, but I can say that our brain listening to us without question, no arguments, you say it, the brain believes it. So you say, okay, yes, this is hard, but, but I can still do this, I can still do that, I can still do this, and the brain says absolutely, but it doesn't stop there. Then it looks for ways to help you. That's exciting too. Yeah. When you lock on to positive stuff, your brain says absolutely, and then it looks for ways to be positive. It doesn't sit back and say, well, good luck. It says, okay, if you insist on this, I'll find ways to do it. Yeah. Okay, so so what I'm going to suggest now is, I mean, we all know from the uh, dozens of episodes that uh, we've uh, and discussions we've had with you, uh, Steve, is that uh, uh, we can no longer hum along the Wizard of Oz if I only had a brain. <laughs> uh, because uh, for better or for worse, we do. We do. Uh, and it listens to everything we say. Uh, it, it, it will not make me a six foot five NBA all star. Has to be realistic. But, yeah. but, but um, I can probably feel taller and maybe uh, do a skyhook. Uh, 
alone someplace. So feel a little bit better about that. That's right. But I think the important thing is that uh, not only uh, if you're feeling a little blue because of the pandemic, watch this a, a second time. It yeah. will really help you. Or binge watch the 30 or some episodes we already have yeah. up on our website uh, yeah. of the uh, fascinating information that you're providing to yeah. us. So no excuses. Okay, the brain whisperer says... Okay, uh, your brain will believe what you tell it. So tell it some good things. Thank you. One last you. piece yeah. of advice, though, is that I, want, I don't want to live to. Uh, I want to share this one. Too. Be kind to yourself. This is hard. This is hard stuff. And people condemn themselves sometimes for being anxious. Be kind to yourself. It's all right to feel some of the things that you're feeling. It's hard. This is a hard time. The world, this is a hard time. I just finished an article on Simone Biles and the fact that she said to the world, I can't do this because I need help up here. And the world wasn't ready for that. And now it's saying, oh my gosh, she's feeling the same way I'm feeling. Wow, that's wonderful. So, John, uh, good advice. Good yeah. advice. I think uh, I think this has been going to be helpful to a lot of people if they watch it. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank Steve. you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.